As far as the format to this event though, we are going to have two presentations from two different speakers talking about two different subjects in inside one one subject essentially. So so we're going to stick stick to visual effects, games and animation. But I'm delighted to say we're joined by Rob Redman from the University of Bradford. And Rob's going to talk about what to expect as far as the course goes. And then we're then joined by St. John Walker, um, who's joined us from Escape Studios, which is part of Pearson College London. And Saint's going to talk about careers and, and what to expect in, in careers in, in this area as well. So um, what I'm going to do is, is leave it there because I'm very conscious that you're not here to, um, to listen to me. You're, you're here to listen to our excellent speakers. So, Rob, if I can pass the floor to you, please. So. Uh, this is what to expect on a creative tech degree, an idea fueled by passion, innovation, and a whole lot of coffee. So, who am I? Well, I'm Rob. Um, that's me when I graduated last time around. Um, I'm a game design and theory specialist. I teach games animation, VFX, um, but I specialise in game theory. Uh, we are part of the School of Media Design Technology at the University of Bradford. Um, we're a tiny part of the massive Faculty of Engineering and Informatics. Um, I'm one of the young academics that's done the full ride from uh, absolute, you know, from scratch all the way through to um, doctorate level and quite a lot of stuff in between. I'll talk more about that as we uh, get towards the end of my presentation. Uh, I kind of used to have a mock, so I kind of used to look a little bit like Crash Bandicoot, but now when I put a suit on, I look more like Gru, so all part of the fun of being an academic. <laughs> so what is a degree in creative tech? Well, it's passion, it's emotion, it's humour, it's fun, it's shenanigans, it's fulfilment, it's hilarity, it's joy. It's absolutely all of the above. There's a lot of internet culture in there, a lot of wonderful memeology as well. And it's a three or four, it feels like a three or four year rolling party from end to end. You've got about a 60% split for work, about a 30% split for when you're actually building crazy cool content, and about 10% of that is completely out of your comfort zone, which is the best place to learn cool things. It's a fantastic place to be and work. It's one of my real, real, I love it. It's, it's the passion is there for it. So creative media and futurology. The future is an ever-changing place. It's a wonderful place to be and a wonderful thing to see. Um, but I hear you say, Rob, we already know this. Of course, everyone knows this. The future is always going to be an ever-changing place. The pace is absolutely ridiculous. It's we're always kind of scampering away from the Moore's law of obsolescence. The you know the old hardware becoming redundant in like three to four weeks. It's absolutely insane when you watch it. It's great, but we see that in creative media as well. You know, the, the first idea is becoming an idea that was a foundation block and now you've gone to something better, which has got even bigger and better outputs out of it. It's brilliant. Um, the next big thing can be released tomorrow. We've seen that two weeks ago with the fresh release of the PS5 and the new hardware specs that come with it. But it might be, the concept that we might be working with might be locked behind an IP, like when Facebook bought out Oculus, or it might be owned by a tech giant like HP or Lenovo. We never know. It's brilliant the amount of stuff that comes out of stuff. It's research in the generalist term, um, in the most general way possible, is literally driving tech forwards. It's not just the, the little nitty gritty stuff or the, the quick blase whack it in Google and see what you find in Google Scholar. Now this is research taking little things to make absolutely huge products. You'll see this with when Notch created Minecraft and that was this little thing built in JS, in JavaScript. And now it's you know, a huge multinational thing that ships with Xboxes that millions of people play globally. It's nuts. And that's all done by a little bit of research. And uh, I want to make a game kind of idea. It's really cool. Um, the mass media will always try and track whatever content has been made. But there are so many niche areas. It's a wonderful place to be. Um, think in niche areas. You've got games, you've got consumables, you've got wearables, you've got internet of things, you've got advertisements, you've got architectural visualization, you've got you know, manufacturing, cinematic experiences, rehabilitation. It's nuts. The amount of times for creative media and technology is a wonderful place to be. Um, so, taking this into account, here's some ideas and some history. It's a quick case study of how most elements of creative tech tie into an actual relevant product. And you'll see this in content that has really been around for the last six years. So we're going to focus a little bit on emergent tech for the next couple of minutes. Uh, it's the technical revolution is upon us. You know, content has gone from being science fiction, gimmickry, the practical use and science fact, buyable, consumable items. It's nuts. And of course, I'm talking about the wonderful VR and AR. This is kind of an example snapshot 
of how a really, really new emergent concept kind of kicks itself into absolutely everything that we can do on a day-to-day -day basis. And this isn't just a singular to my institution, this is across the entire world. This is great. So when we, we started with uh, the idea of kind of digital scanning with uh, archaeology and the kind of the dig site sampling, being able to find a, a cross section of content through uh, LIDAR and you know, clever kind of uh, the geological survey stuff and ground penetrating radar. And you can create a full VR experience. So you can explore multiple layers of a dig site without even really trying because it's all in VR and you've already got the data there with photogrammetry. It's really cool. You can also play around it in video game engines, which is awesome, like Unreal. Uh, Google Maps and the AR, the AR mode. This is actually a fairly recent thing. I think I got this about three weeks ago and this plugs into your Google Maps on your, your API on your phone and makes it look like it's out of need for speed. That's your know, real-time mapping on your phone. It's brilliant. Um, if you have caves for product design for Land Rover, you know, this is a crossover with Vicon motion capture. These are the guys that do the motion capture for Avatar. It's brilliant. And you can explore their, in their VR cave, like six projectors and all done in real time. And you can look at product tolerances in small spaces on a big screen wall without actually having to build anything. It's very, very cool. But taking this further, you've got architectural visualization done by rapid prototyping in, in UE4. So everything from supermarkets all the way through to luxury apartments. This, in, this last piece here I really, really like. It is actually the architectural visualization plugin for UE4. We do an awful lot of work with this. It's very, very cool and it looks beautiful. Um, and you'd be, you'd be surprised how that's come from being an absolute tiny thing to being absolutely huge at the moment. It's wonderful. Um, this is it running an engine. Pretty cool. Uh, the GT Sport Racing Academy, so this is where things tie into sport. Um, you know, it starts with a racing game and a PlayStation 2 or a PS4 kind of thing. The next thing you know, you've actually got a driver who's sat behind the wheel of a Nissan GTR who's winning things, you know, sponsored by Polyphony Digital. And they actually have a cup car and race in, you know, the touring car series. It's brilliant. And this is just a crossover from ideas. You've got military training and simulation, which unfortunately due to the elements of military training is somewhat classified and very difficult to get sources from. But you know that there's some cool stuff out there and I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes next from there. You've got your firefighter AR overlays. This was a month ago. This was put up onto BBC's Click. And this is to help you know, the, the guys at the frontline responders actually doing stuff. Very, very cool. And of course, AAA Studio Gaming, seeing things going from you know, the kind of consumables that you'd touch in your lounge, you know, something that you might play on a, a 3D headset, you know, sorry, 3D headset, play 3D glasses all the way through to Minecraft VR, which currently the record for our university department running with a full field of view is 48 seconds until someone was losing the lunch into a bucket. But it's still part of the fun, it's part of the experience. But now we're seeing Beat Saber as a global phenomenon where people are actually making money off of playing VR games. It's insane how fast that this prototype has burned through. So practical reality with this, there's two ways. We've got to kind of make things fun. We've got to, we are experts in our area, but we've got to make our expert our expertise and our knowledge actually transfer and transfer well and that's what we're after you know we aren't stuffy academics we don't fall into that pond we we don't sit in the you know we're not the old oh, guy with the get off my lawn kind of thing we're all about making it fun we don't do the golden pillow award if you want some hilarious stuff to look up have a look at the golden pillow award as is university for the most boring lecture um but creative tech isn't just games ai animation tv film and vfx it goes much further than that you can niche into almost any area you know a hardware hacker in making doom run on a hive home thermostat it's got a screen can it run doom that's the kind of cool stuff we might try or for the technically inclined you know you've got your white hat pen testing and social engineering you know can i make my internet much more secure or can i see what my phone is doing between and it's wonderful things or Film jams, uh, sorry, film and game jams and rapid prototyping. You know, is it building stuff that you can say, oh yeah, we did 24 hour game jam when the global game jam ran in, in June, July, and we did that socially distanced across the globe. Very, very cool stuff. We do all, we've done all sorts of stuff. It is an academia thing. Not only are we part of it, but our students are part of it as well. It's brilliant. Right, so on to buzzword bingo, right? Buzzword bingos are one of those things that you're going to encounter in, well, industry and business and normally it sits around a boardroom so buzzword bingo in the case that i've here that i hear a lot in creative tech and creative media it's the business of the future to be dangerous you'll be working with content that doesn't tangibly exist yet so that sounds a little bit of a weird kind of philosophical 
um, quote. It's actually a quote from an album by Hawkwind, which is uh, Lenny Kilminster's band, i.e. the guy who was known for Motorhead. Um, but working with content that doesn't technically exist means you can develop cool stuff. It's the, it not, it not be what it is, but it do. The, the things won't always be in a cohesive order while concepting. Like you might come up with that great idea, the what ifs are kind of there, but the product, the product that you'll be looking for will always be fairly close. Even if it is just within you know, that, that little bit of almost there kind of finger touch in a way. And they're making it so you've got to go out and make cool stuff because that's the whole point of creative media, regardless of where you study. It's making things, going just the route that you go through at university level and just doing what your tutors tell you to do and what the modules do. That's, that's a run of the mill stuff. That doesn't set you apart from anyone else. So you've got to make it so you've got to go out and make something cool. And if you get a chance to take part in you know, offline activities or extracurricular stuff, definitely do it. Jump at the chance to do it because it's worth every penny and you'll get a cool product out the other side of it. You'd be surprised how well portfolio pieces go, go with that. What about employability, right? So employability in the creative media sector after is a little bit on the interesting side. 75% within three months go into industry. That's across all institutions. These are numbers that you can dig up anywhere. 85% further than that go within to industry within six months. There's a further five of us stick around and do a master's or a PhD or a teaching qualification or carry on and do something in academia. And the 10% go elsewhere, you know, they might be an entrepreneur, they might be self-employed, they might be you know, out of sector or freelance. But the, this, what I've just put up here, is literally just some of the areas where some of our students have gone, but I know this is also a big place to pick up for some of the guys from London, this is where Leeds Met guys go, this is everyone in the north of England, well, as far as I'm aware. But there's also all the indie startups, all of the entrepreneur programs, all of the small studios. Creative tech is never dying, it's getting bigger and bigger, it's fantastic to work in. It's, um, this piece that I'm going to put up here, um, this is, I'll keep this very, very quick. Uh, this is a, from a student of mine called Jamie Johnson. Um, he uh, came into University of Bradford with no 3D experience at all. And he could do this in any institution and took up uh, 3D modelling and absolutely fell in love with it. And we asked him to build a Mario Kart 8 level for a brief uh, a module I run called Environment Set and Prop Creation. And with no prior 3D experience, and after three years been able to produce a piece of work as good as this, um, this is what he built. This is his Mario Kart level from scratch. This got him a job. Well, I'd rather say got him a job. This got him an interview at Ubisoft Montreal just with this video alone. I can't get over how good it is. It's amazing. We've taken this on tour, taken it to uh, our stand at EGX, and we've had people wanting to play a video, which has been awesome. It's been very cool. So you'll see this across any place that you go and work at. The, the content that they produce is incredible. So what does it take? Well, creative tech is always evolving. It's interdisciplinary. It might not be your area of expertise while you're building something cool. It might slide across into something slightly different. Or you might find yourself working with a guy who's really, really good at video editing. A couple of people that are absolute A-grade animators. You know, someone who's a, a wonderful script writer and director. And a couple of guys that are really, really into games. It's, it's massively interdisciplinary. You know, it takes determination to kind of do it to pursue the, the pursuit of knowledge, to kind of keep that creative juice set going. And you've got to have the drive and the passion behind it. And the more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. It's, you know, the outputs are great content. You'll get a lot of contacts. If you turn up to all of the university stuff, brilliant. But if you go a little bit further and when you go out and do university events, you know, that you might have got tickets for through your institution, you, you'll gain career experience. You might gain career experience. You might get people's business cards. That might get you a job down the road. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how, how close these things are. You know, they might be looking for a designer and you might be that next person. So what if I muck it all up? That's kind of what I did. Um, I followed my friends and didn't follow myself. Um, and I took the wrong classes in sixth form. This is the reason why I took foundation year. My two best friends in high school in sixth form were maths prodigies. And I suffer from dyscalculia, as I found out when I started university, when I was screened for it. Um, so I graduated... Uh, high school sixth form with enough UCAS points to probably order myself a double cheeseburger and work at Morrison's for the next 30 years and I didn't want to do that I didn't want to be go sat at a checkout going beep or running pallets off a truck so I applied to the university that I went to obviously UAB and I did the foundation year and they worked around the content that I was missing they they got me clued up enough to drop onto the bachelor's degree, graduated off that, and then master's degree, then my teaching degree, now my PhD. 
and hopefully this time next year I'll be Dr. Rob, which is going to be very cool. Um, but it's never truly the end. So even if it seems like you've thrown your, your stuff away in sixth form because you might have followed your friends or your, your grades in high school weren't that great, you can always take a foundation year at almost any institution. So I know that we've probably got a couple of questions. Please stick them in the QA section below. If you've got anything specifically sent for, for me, please include them in that. Um, I think, I think we're doing it post presentations. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but it's all good. Um, and thank you for listening. And this is my favorite part of this slide because it does this kind of crazy effect. Um, but is that uh, wonderful? Um, I'll stop sharing. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Uh, excellent session. Uh, looking at basically what's involved in the courses and, and touching on um, careers as well with with the student and the Mario Kart student in, in Canada, etc. So, thank you, Rob. Really, really, really good session. And as Rob mentioned, um, we have got Q and A running. So, if you've got any questions after that for Rob, um, do send them over in the correct Q and A, which is the tab just at the bottom of the screen. If I can now introduce our second speaker, though, that's Saint John Walker, who is the deputy deputy dean of London's Escape Studios, which is part of Pearson College London and Saint's going to talk to us about careers in the subject area as well so careers in the world of computer games visual effects and animation. So uh, I'm going to be speaking about careers because whatever course you decide to go on whether you know you go on a degree course at Bradford or with Escape or anywhere else or you go on any kind of course in, in media uh, you're going to have to start thinking about a career and as Rob pointed out uh, we don't know what's going to happen in three years time but we have some basics of advice and rules for you which hopefully uh, you'll find useful. Uh, so the first thing uh, as we've said uh, these days there are lots and lots of uh, careers information out there about VFX animation and games which wasn't the case say five or even ten years ago there's a lot of stuff there about you know, getting a, a career in America, but not a lot about the UK. But now there's lots and lots of, of stuff you can find out there, which is trusted sources. I'm going to be taking you through and introducing you to some of the sort of best places to find out more. So it won't be me telling you about uh, careers, which will be where the honeypots of information are if you, when you're on any media course, get really interested in animation, games, or VFX. These are the kind of sources that you can find. But um, to sort of cut to sort of what one thing that uh, Rob actually said, uh, which was about, you know, the creative industries. He was talking about AR and VR and their new additions to the creative industries. But the UK is actually really, really good at creative creativity. So 111 billion uh, pounds, uh, 2 million people working in it. We have one of the top games um, industries in the world, likewise VFX, um, and we have huge numbers of support roles there as well. So there's loads and loads of careers in this area. And we put this slide up really for parents, because sometimes parents don't know, they kind of think this is a kind of dodgy fly-by-night, you know, games uh, industry, but actually you can have really solid careers now in games, VFX and animation. Uh, and hopefully we'll be persuading you about that. So uh, the government as well is actually supporting those industries and sees them as main areas of growth. So uh, it's our global advantage. Uh, in uh, 2018 there was a special sector deal which involved various bits of funding for the industry and uh, you may not know this but people like ILM, Industrial Light and Magic, who uh, make Star Wars, in 2014 they brought, they came over to the UK to London to set up because of uh, tax breaks and because of opportunities over here with the amazing talent we have. And if you think about our industry, it's everything from Peppa Pig, Wallace and Gromit, Grand Theft Auto, not a lot of people know that, J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter, you know, uh, Alexander McQueen, Ed Sheeran, they're all great things to do with our VFX industries. But let's talk about VFX animation and uh, games, because if you're on a course, you're going to have to think about your future and the skills you get on a degree course can really help you gravitate to towards those. Now, the first thing is, you know, you may not know much about VFX animation and games, so how do you start? Well, I would say, you know, first of all, do a bit of research. Uh, we actually have on the Escape Studios website uh, a careers quiz, which you can go on and uh, take, and that'll help you sort of decide whether, you know, your strengths uh, and your potential lie in those particular 
uh, fields. Uh, don't worry about making a note of the uh, URL. Uh, I'm sure uh, uh, John will pass on the uh, URLs and the links later on. So uh, consider them yours uh, by the end of the, the day. Okay, so you can try a, a career, find your, uh, try a careers quiz, find your passion. Uh, we also have on the Escape uh, uh, website uh, an industry beginner's guide because we know it can be very confusing for students. Each industry, as I'm sure you know, has its own jargon and way of doing things and they can seem kind of very uh, bewildering. So we've written a, a beginner's guide to help people, you know, find out more about how to get started because that's the most difficult thing, I think, getting started in VFX animation or games you know how does all that stuff fit together how does the stuff you see at the cinema a lot of it made in the UK by the way uh, or the games you play on your uh, console how do they get made well you know you can be part of those industries uh, I'm going to talk now about a particular role a particular career which is a great way to start so whatever media course you might do you may want to try becoming what's called a runner and a runner essentially is a person, uh, it's a great new entrant job, uh, it's uh, throughout the industry, particularly VFX and animation, but sometimes in games as well, where you join the organisation, you become kind of a, a sort of service uh, support to artists, to animators and technicians. Uh, some part of it is serving coffee to people and tea, making them feel welcome, but other parts of it are important, like maintaining equipment. You become really, really useful to the organisation by the fact you are flexible and able to do everything from you know, uh, duplicating files to uh, meeting and greeting people at reception to photocopying to meetings of amazing artists, making sure that they're uh, okay. Um, and you need lots of skills for that, which will uh, set you uh, apart from others and help you in your way. So it's a great sort of entry level start. Uh, you need to be computer literate, of course, and you need to have ambition and to use problem solving. Okay. So um, I'm also gonna introduce you now to a, a, another great place to look for, for details about being a runner or getting into the industry and that's Access VFX. And Access VFX is an organisation, it's now multinational, and it's set up by at least 40 of the biggest VFX companies in the world who want to ensure that they get new talent from everywhere, not just degree courses, not just master's courses or PhD, but apprenticeships and internships and all kinds of places. So it's really worth you looking at accessvfx.org. Uh, and if you do look at that site, you'll know that uh, you'll see that they have a day in the life of runner. So you can find out what it's really like to be a runner from uh, Framestore. Uh, they're the people who did Gravity, uh, they've done Paddington, so many uh, amazing feature film uh, effects. Uh, uh, you should really have a look at that because on, only if you hear from the people who are actually doing the job will you really understand about it. But look at, um, so look at that, look at Access VFX and uh, decide if a runner is a, uh, a position that you might be interested in. All organisations that have runners have it in their interest to promote you once you've, you know, once you've found out, found your way around, because you know what they're like, you know what they need, and therefore you're promotable. So getting it in as a runner is a really good idea. Okay, so VFX, we kind of know, don't we, that, uh, you know, the UK uh, is you know, one of the world leaders. We won VFX Oscars for Gravity, Interstellar, The Golden Compass, Inception, Ex Machina, and even The Jungle Book. Uh, so we're really good at what we do. But also, VFX isn't just lightsabers and sort of explosions and robots. It's everywhere. So VFX as an industry is everywhere. Uh, the films that maybe your parents would watch or your guardian would watch uh, on Netflix, for instance, you know, the period dramas and stuff, crammed full of VFX. So VFX, if you're interested in VFX, you don't have to be a science nerd, a science fiction nerd. You can just be interested in images. And the great thing about VFX is, I think, fooling people because you're fooling people into believing something uh, is there when it doesn't uh, exist. 
Okay, another, uh, another great source to find out about VFX is this, and it looks really complicated. Uh, screen skills, who are an organization who look after what's called the screen industries, and again, try and get talent in uh, and help the industries grow. Uh, they've got these amazing things called careers maps. And at first they look really confusing, but actually they're really good roadmaps for you to decide how you might travel from job to job or how you might uh, get into a particular industry. And they've got them not just for VFX, but for in other industries as well. So screen skills, if you remember nothing else, uh, look up screen skills and see uh, the stuff because they've got some amazing uh, information for you about all kinds of industry careers. Uh, another great place to look uh, if you want to find out about VFX is the VFX Festival uh, that we run uh, and it's annual but this year we're running out throughout the year, we're running events throughout the year. Uh, um, I think uh, you might have uh, got the uh, URL truncated slightly there, it's a com so it's thevfxfestival.com. Uh, but that's great because you can find out more about who's making VFX and learn that way. And also they'll tell you about how they got into the industry. There's nothing better, is there, than finding out from other people, uh, uh, role models, about how they got into the industry. Okay, I'm swiftly gonna move to games now because the games industry in the UK is also huge. Uh, as you can see from this figure, 5.7 billion pounds uh, of uh, market value and uh, games of course are everywhere now not just on con consoles from phones they're everywhere um, and the thing about games as, as well which is, might be uh, interesting to some people is games are games companies are everywhere uh, they don't have to be in London or the big cities because unlike uh, VFX uh, which needs to be close to TV and film uh, industry games can be anywhere so if you're not particularly interested in coming down to London for instance uh, to work then maybe look into, into games uh, and again this is from uh, a website which I'll uh, drop into um, uh, I'll tell uh, John about later on but uh, some of the VFX uh, some of the uh, <laughs> some of the game stuff Grand Theft Auto, Auto Forza Horizon, Monument Valley they're all been made in the UK uh, although you might not know it. And there's 2,261 games companies in the UK at the last count. So there's loads of them as well. Um, okay. Uh, some of the jobs in, in games, and I'm going to talk particularly about games art, because games have kind of two sides, the technical side and the games art side. So uh, one of the particular uh, jobs which might be of interest if you're a bit technical and a bit creative, is technical artists and they're the people who sort of use art and code together to make games and so it's a very high pressure job uh, but there's great uh, uh, ways into the industry uh, that way and there's actually an apprenticeship uh, in this as well so you don't have to necessarily go to university to know more about it. Um, but the kind of things you need for this is you need to know a games engine like Unity or Unreal. Uh, you need to know 3D like Maya or 3DS Max. You need an artistic eye and maybe a bit of uh, Python programming uh, if you've got it. And a bit of a knowledge of game pipelines, which you can get by doing stuff in your own free time. You don't necessarily need to go on a course for that. So uh, that's one thing to look out for the way in. Another way, of course, is 3D modeling, which is where you build stuff in 3D. Uh, uh, so you make uh, models and uh, place them within uh, a game for someone else to uh, use and uh, uh, program. Uh, so you've got there, you've got to be sort of really hot on stuff like rendering. You've got to be hot on a, a program like Substance Designer or Substance Painter and Photoshop. Uh, experience with the games engine, but you've also got to be really good at communication and you've got to be good at time management because all these things are about deadlines. Okay, uh, I'm gonna just rush on a bit. Uh, again, you can find out all this information from Screen Skills website. Uh, again, that place where the careers maps are. Um, okay, so uh, Last of Us as two, as you know, uh, top the charts. And again, that's a, a, a lot of that was made by Sony in the UK. Uh, 
so that's that's uh, an example of how good we are in the UK. Right now, uh, what's this about? Well, this uh, is today today's animation, uh, animation which we kind of think of as young kids stuff. Actually, today it's stuff like this, uh, or it might be stuff like Paddington on the right, made by Blue Zoo, uh, and of course that's a kids' TV, and then Paddington on the left. Very different kind of approach, but still uh, an animation. Uh, and animation is uh, incredibly popular across VFX games and, of course, on its own rights for kids' TV, etc. Um, one of the skills that you really need to know uh, for animation is rigging. Uh, so if you're not particularly good at animation, maybe rigging is the kind of thing you might want to look at. And for that, you kind of need an, uh, uh, to understand bones and uh, anatomy uh, because what you're essentially doing you're taking somebody else's model and you're building a skeleton with joints to go inside it to move it so you're not particularly the animator yourself but you're enabling someone else to be an animator so that's kind of cool really taking somebody's model and then building a sort of jointed skeleton to go inside it no one knows it's there but you are the person who makes sure that the model moves correctly, it's animated correctly. It's a great uh, skill and it's really in demand as well. Okay, uh, if you're interested in animation, uh, and again, it's another tip, the summerofanimation.com is on right now. You can join for free. Uh, it's uh, essentially uh, a time to learn all about animation for free with a program called Blender. It's on right now. It's for uh, 15 to 18 year olds but if you're unlucky enough to be too old or too young you can still go on YouTube and look at all the master classes they're doing at the moment for different roles in the industry so fantastic opportunity okay I'm coming to the end now um, and this is kind of where the cutting edge is I guess these days all those skills we've talked about animation VFX and games all find themselves a home in VR so by becoming good at one of those skills you're actually future proofing yourself for uh, the future world you won't be your skills won't be out of date by the end of the course uh, and these are the skills that you should all think about as well because it's not about the technology Rob and I have been showing you some amazing stuff, but it's not about the tech, actually. The tech is relatively easy. It's how creative you are and how, uh, how much innovation you uh, use to make new things happen. Also, it's not about where you go uh, to university. You now, you wouldn't expect me to say that, but I have. Uh, the main thing is the showreel. That's your passport to your future. So if you're looking for a university, decide, when you're looking round, is this the place where I can get the best kind of show reel? Because that's your passport in the future. All these other skills are, of course, uh, uh, important. Teamwork is really important. Working in teams. All the stuff I've shown you can't be done by one person anymore. It's all done by teams. And on that note, I think I'm running out of time. So I'm going to just flip to my last slide and say, whatever you choose to do, good luck in your journey on your future career.